Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital spoilers claim that Hamilton Finn intended to eat supper at Elizabeth Baldwin's house, but he taunted her by saying it wouldn't be as much fun as what they did in the locker room. Terry Randolph afterwards approached Liz and revealed she had heard rumors about several people hooking up in the locker room shower. Liz confirmed the rumor, however she added that she only kissed Finn when they were inside. Felicia Scorpio received some information about her new patient advocate role and expressed gratitude to Stella Henry for serving as her mentor ahead of her first day. Stella admitted to Portia Robinson that she had rejected down the position of co-chief of staff but was reconsidering it now. Portia was hesitant to take on additional work when Curtis Ashford was still adjusting, but she enjoyed the prospect of a higher-level position with better income. Stella pushed Portia to go for it, since she thought Curtis would approve, so Portia met with Terry in her office. Terry said she'd tell Monica Quartermain about Portia's change of heart, and that Portia may start Monday. Yuri also had some romantic moments with Terry and questioned Liz about Finn's health. Before leaving GH, Yuri indicated that he was starting a new job and needed to find out how to inform his old boss. Spencer Cassadine brought Trina Robinson to the door at Portia and Curtis Place as they pondered on their fantastic New York City holiday. Trina kissed Spencer goodbye before sending him off to rejoin Ace Cassadine. Inside, Trina gave Curtis some mementos and received his assurance that he was glad to see her living her life. Marshall Ashford caught up with Trina and quietly asked Curtis whether he truly believed Spencer was suitable for her, but Curtis couldn't tell her what to do or who to see. Following that, Kevin and Laura Collins were looking forward to unwinding after their flight, but instead found an overwhelmed Esm Prince, Avery Pohl, at the apartment and pitched in with Ace. Esm had scarcely slept and had to leave work today since Ace was teething and cranky. Laura learned about Spencer and Trainer's weekend in NYC after Esm hinted about the hardships she encountered on her own. Spencer discovered Laura holding Ace while Esm was in the other room and greeted two of his favorite people. Esm was relieved to see Spencer soon after and assisted him in singing Ace to sleep for his nap with a humorous tune. Although Laura was relieved to see Spencer and Esm getting along, Kevin was concerned that Esm would be secluded while Spencer was socializing. According to Kevin, this was certain to produce some conflict. Laura and Kevin informed Spencer and Esm about Nicholas Cassadine's cash withdrawals in Geneva when they were all in the living room together. There was evidence that Nicholas was still alive, but he definitely did not wish to return to Port Charles. When Spencer was alone with Laura, he focused about Nicholas abandoning them exactly as he had predicted. Spencer pretended that they'd be better off if Nicholas didn't return, but Laura knew he wasn't serious. Laura remained optimistic that Nicholas would finally recognize his error. Regardless, Spencer hugged Laura and told her how much he missed her. Laura then called Valentine Cassadine and left a message because she wanted to learn more about Charlotte Cassadine's position. Gregory Chase apologized to Harrison Chase, Josh Swickard, in his son's apartment for withholding the truth about his ALS. It wasn't because Gregory didn't think Chase could handle it. Gregory sought Chase's contagious optimism and relished the times when everything felt normal. Although Gregory recognized that leaving Chase in the dark wasn't fair, Chase was fine with it as long as he'd brought some happiness. When Finn arrived and apologized to his own secrecy, Chase maintained he understood because Gregory had explained everything. There was nothing Chase or Finn could do to stop what was about to happen to Gregory, but Finn insisted they had many more happy days ahead of them. Gregory was grateful to have the support of both of his boys right now. Brooke Lynn sounded Tracy Quartermain, Jane Elliott, at the Quartermain mansion for telling Chase about Gregory's ALS and laughed at her grandmother's insistence that it was an honest mistake. When there was a knock on the door, Brooke Lynn swung it open aggressively, wondering what that unexpected visitor wanted. 
Brooke Lynn was overjoyed to see her mother, Lois Sarolo, and warmly embraced her. Tracy was surprised to see Lois and inquired about the motive for this presumably brief visit. Lois claimed that she'd heard about deception abandoning her Brookie and came to check on her because something didn't seem right. Brooke Lynn recognized she deserved to be discarded, but she blamed Tracy for her involvement in a corporate espionage plot. Lois was enraged by Tracy's behavior, but Tracy swiftly disappeared. In the next room, Eddie Main alias Ned Quartermain slept on the sofa and dreamed he was performing naked. Olivia Quartermain was in the crowd with Lois, so Eddie awoke and acknowledged Olivia was in his reoccurring dream with another lady. Although Olivia encouraged Eddie to tell Kevin about his nightmares and try to bring his memories to the surface, Eddie didn't believe a therapist could help. Olivia yelled with delight and embraced Lois as she realized she was in the living room. Lois preferred to stay at Metro Court, but Olivia persuaded her to stay at the Quartermain estate instead. Eddie heard the noise and came over to check what was going on, which reminded him of Lois. Although Lois imagined it was because they were married and she was the mother of his kid, Eddie remembered her from somewhere else and appeared to be lost in contemplation. This spark of recognition was evidently caused by Eddie's earlier dream. According to General Hospital spoilers, Eddie could develop strong feelings for Lois if details from their shared past emerge. Carly can't stop playing with matches, no matter how many times she gets burned. In the October 9 episode of General Hospital, recap here, she approached Alexis with information about the judge who sentenced Drew to prison for insider trading, which both ladies thought was a tragedy of justice. Never mind that Drew and Carly were both found guilty as charged. Prison sentence is intended for big bads like Cyrus Renault and four guys like Sean Butler, who was wrongfully convicted for shooting Hayden Barnes. Well, sort of incorrectly. He didn't shoot Hayden, but he was attempting to shoot Drew. Anyway, I digress. The ridiculous strategy devised by Carly and Alexis entails persuading the judge to demonstrate that he is in the pockets of special interests. In the actual world, however, such a program would, and could never, function. Even if he pushed his foot directly into his mouth, the worst that could happen is that he'd be exposed in the pages of the invader. He's not going to offer Alexis a quote like, you wouldn't believe how lucrative it was for me to send Drew Kane to jail. Furthermore, the judge may wish to retaliate against Carly, and how long do you think it would take him to unearth some kind of health code violation that would force Kelly's to close? He could even charge her with attempted entrapment. If innocent, because I'm a main character, is a viable defense, guilty because your scheme was stupid, must be a viable offense, right? In the end, rather than being relieved that she isn't already in prison for insider trading, Carly may be given a prison jumpsuit as a memory of her failed sting operation. Isn't it past time she paid for any of her crimes? So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.